Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm over here at Studio B doing a little bit of computer repair and I got to thinking about all the cool tools that are available. Um, these things all came from Banggood. I think uh, they sent me some of these for free and some of them I bought. Um, but anyway, these things are uh, really cool tools to make diagnosing computers easier. Now, um, I've got this thing here, which is an ATX power supply tester. You can see it can do 24 pin or 20 pin and the various connectors for the drives and things like that. And uh, while this thing doesn't put it under a particular load, it will give you kind of a quick and dirty test if your power supply is functioning and if it's putting out voltages that are in spec. So I grabbed three random ATX power supplies and they could all test good, they could all test bad. I have no idea, they were just sitting in my box of power supplies to be tested. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in uh, this thing over here and then I'm going to plug in one of the other connectors Let's so that we're using both rails. Uh, this thing's got a lot of connectors on it. It's a thermal take. I'm going to find some kind of six or four pin or eight pin connector somewhere on here. I'll take this one just so we have something on the other side. And uh, we are going to turn the thing on and see what happens. Come on. And you can see that with this one, we get absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna shut it down. Um, and I think we'll see something on the next one, but this one uh, is telling us nothing on the screen. Now, the way I used to do it, basically since the ATX power supply came out, is uh, I would take the green wire right here uh, right there and any of the black wires and if you short those together with a paper clip or something like that Then the power supply would kick on which is your first sense that the thing is good And then after that you could go in here and test the individual voltages and stuff like that uh, You know and then you'd have to go around to the different uh, Buses and things like that and just make sure that everything seemed good But we have tools now to make this process a lot quicker So let's try another drive or another power supply and we'll see how it looks. This is a uh, power supply that looks like it's seen better days. We're going to see how this one goes. And you can see right here we've got 12 volts and showing low on the second rail over here and I believe the reason for that is because you need a second one here. So as you can see uh, we've got the 12 volts showing up right around 12. We've got uh, second rail showing up at 11.9, 5 volt is showing up as 5 volts. Uh, the PG is the power good. The uh, ATX power supply spec says that I think it's somewhere between 100 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds. It should hold low and give a power good signal. Um, and this one did that right in the middle. Uh, and then it gives us the other ones here, which are all looking like they're in spec. So what we can also do is test the various connectors and we'll see if we're getting... Uh, the proper voltages, you can see readouts down here, and you can see that this being uh, red and yellow is going to give us 12 and 5 volts. And that one looks good. We'll grab one over here and test the 3.5 power connector. And we've got, um, it's a little tight. There we go. We've got the 3 and 5 there, and then if we want to see all three, I think the uh, SATA will give us that. So we'll come over here to the SATA. Maybe it's upside down? I don't know. There we go. SATA gives us uh, 12, 3.3, and 5 all lighting up. So despite the way this power supply looks, it tests out good. I thought no reason to make you guys watch me hook this one up, but uh, I've got it plugged in. And now we're going to plug in over here and see what happens. We've got, uh, this one's in spec too. If I find one that happens to be out of spec, I'll maybe pop it in the video, but so far my power supplies are either dead or in spec, but it's good to know for sure. So these things will get a little check mark on top of them and I'll know that I've already checked it to make sure that it's at least uh, operational. Another thing that's just downright amazing is that we have access to these inexpensive cards from places like Banggood and uh, they're debugging cards. And when I was a kid, something like this would have been really expensive. We're about to have a visitor. Um, something like this would have been, 
would have been really expensive. Um, but the fact is now we can pick something like this up for around 10 bucks. And uh, there's a couple different versions of this. There's the one that has uh, just this stuff on it and then the one that also has the external display. Um, and the idea is this one can be used in the PCI bus and the ISA bus. And this one can be used in mini PCIe and uh, mini PCI, so for laptops and things like that. And what's neat is something like this will show you that the clock is firing, that the, uh, uh, what is it, the RQs are ready, frame buffer, and whether the, the CPU reset has happened, as well as giving you the uh, negative 12 volts, positive 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts off the bus. So you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Um, now, I haven't diagnosed this motherboard at all that I have down here, kind of out of focus at the moment. Um, this thing had, let me turn you guys, this thing had some battery damage here, which is super common on these motherboards. This is actually a socket 4. Uh, which I guess might even be like a Pentium 60 or something like that. I don't know. I haven't actually taken the CPU off. Um, but anyway, so when we fire this up on the ISA bus, you can see there's some struggling here on the lights. They're barely lighting up here. We've got a little bit of 12 volts going on there. No 5. The negative 12 is barely on. And uh, we got nothing going on down there. Now, if I were to bring this card up, um, to the now he had, you do have to make sure you put the rear facing in the right direction especially in the ISA because it can be reversed um, but I'm going to bring this one up here to a PCI slot and we're going to turn it on and you're going to see that we've got um, good voltage going on there and these things look like they're doing something and this lit up it uh, wants to do something but you can see we haven't gotten any codes I'm going to turn it off so you don't have to hear the the winding of that fan with the bad bearings. But the idea is that as the BIOS processes through its various steps, it outputs the code here and you get the latest code and the previous code and you can step through them. Um, but essentially you can figure out what was the last step that happened before the board stopped booting. And what's neat about this is you notice there's no graphics card plugged in. So when I can do some tests, um, let's say, you know, with all this shorting going on, I don't want to plug in a good graphics card and risk blowing it. I don't want to put anything in the board that I don't have to. And so with this, I can, uh, can use this inexpensive card to go through and begin to test things and try to step through the process and see where we're at. So this motherboard also has ISA and PCI slots, but um, I'm pretty sure this motherboard works. Uh, so I've got it connected to the ATX power supply that's hanging from the sky up here in Studio B. And uh, we're gonna plug this card in and hopefully you'll be able to see uh, what one looks like as it goes through the post process. So we're gonna gently put that in there and I'm gonna hold this up here so you guys can see it. This way you'll be able to see the lights kind of from the top. Uh, this may or may not turn on with the outlet strip, we'll see. Okay, so it didn't, turn. oh, no, it did. Okay, so you can see right here, a little hard to read. Um, you can see I've got A3 EC, A0, A3. And as I said, it goes through A9, A23. So it's cycling through all these different codes, which I do realize is hard to read on here, um, 6FDF. Now, if this thing were to fail to boot, you might be able to see the 6FDF there, probably not. So it does come with this little book, which is good for a lot of the older 386 and 486 stuff. Once you get into the Pentium stuff, you're a lot better off um, looking it up online. You go to the BIOS type, you say, you know, what are the BIOS codes for this? And you kind of figure out where it gets stuck. Now, I don't think 6F is gonna be in here. As you can see, it's blank. Uh, but what happens is, uh, it will give you the codes and tell you what it did. So if 62 pops up on an award bias, it tells you that that is setting up the numlock status. So what it's basically stepping through is, hey, I set up the virus protection, I tried to run the level two cache, I set up the boot speed according to the bias, and it's just stepping through and saying, this is what I did, this is what I did, this is what I did. And so when it doesn't do something, you can go back and find out um, kind of where it got stuck and maybe why. So uh, anyway, this is another one of those just cool tools that it's really cool to have. And again, I realize this is really hard to read on your screen, but um, to the naked eye, 6FDF, super easy to read. You can come through here, I think on one of these buttons and uh, I haven't done it in a while. And you can scroll through the different um, different settings and some of that. You can see that I'm getting a good uh, solid light for all the 
the bus voltages and things like that. So this gives me a better indication that the motherboard is good. So anyway, these tools are very cool. I want to thank Banggood for sending me the ones they sent me. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. And if you want to pick up any of this stuff, check out my links in the description. I think it's one of those things, if you work on a computer, you may not use this stuff every day, but when you want it, when you need it, like you want to have it. Uh, rather than plugging in things when you're unsure, put this card in there, it's cheap, and uh, let it give you at least a little bit of information to point you in the right direction. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.